What is up guys, my name is Michael Green, also known as the Bearded Christian, and today we're going to be carrying on our Bible study series in Joshua chapter 3, um, and uh, this is a doozy one. This Here we're going to really see how having faith that God is going to move, even though you don't know what he's going to do, can really impact your people, but can est- is is how is potentially how God can choose you to be a leader, and not only that is you're going to see how it's important not for you to just rush ahead of your people, but to wait for them to catch up with you, then rushing on ahead and leaving them in the wilderness. So if that sounds good, if you're ready to get into this, let's get into it. Awesome, guys. So just a disclaimer, I actually already read this, but I didn't press record. So I'm going to read it again, and you're going to see that my notes are already written when we turn to them, but that's just because I've already had my quiet time. Um, but I'm just going to redo this now for uh, for the sake of you guys. But you know what? Maybe it's a bit more beneficial for me to read it again. Um, so it says, early the next morning, Joshua and all the Israelites left as Achaia, Acacia Grove and arrived at the banks of the Jordan River where they camped before crossing. Three days later, the Israelite officials went through the camp, giving these instructions to the people. When you see the Levitical priesthood carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, move out from your positions and follow them. Since you have never traveled this way before, they will guide you. Stay about half a mile behind them, carrying a clear, keeping a clear distance between you and the Ark. Make sure you don't come any closer. Then Joshua told the people, Purify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do great wonders among you. In the morning, Joshua told the priests, Lift up the Ark of the Covenant and lead the people and cr- lead the people across the Jordan River. So they started out and went ahead of the people. The Lord told Joshua, today I will begin to make you a great leader in the eyes of all the Israelites. They will know that I am with you just as I was with Moses. Give this command to the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant. When you reach the banks of the Jordan River, take a few steps into the river and stop there. This to me really stood out to me in my quiet time notes which we have here, um, this really stood out to me because to me, what was powerful here is that you have Joshua who says to the people, purify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do great wonders among you. But he doesn't know what great wonders he's going to do. And then he tells the priests, look, can you guys start getting ready, go to the water's edge because I know my God is going to do a miracle right now. And then it, then the Lord told Joshua to go and tell the 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 priests um well to go and tell these priests to take the ark of the government and go to the banks but he says before that i am going to establish you as a great leader what if god saw that joshua even though god hadn't told him yet that he was going to do great things god saw man this guy's already knows that I am not going to let him down, that I'm going to do a miracle, even though they're facing a river. But he knows what miracles I've done in the past, so he knows I can do this. And he's just sure of it. And God's like, man, this is someone who has faith in me, believes in me, knows I can do the impossible, and is confidently saying it. And then he's like, you know, I'm going to establish you as a leader. And I think it's this sort of faith that leaders have to have. Imagine you have a leader who comes to like, you know, a difficult challenge, something that seems impossible. is like, you know what, guys, we can't do this. Our God, he can't get us through this. This isn't going to be possible. So, yeah, let's just stay here. Let's not move forward. Let's not overcome these big challenges and these obstacles. And doesn't believe it. And you can't be like that as a leader. And I can't be like that as a leader. And I think this is a powerful observation, is that Joshua someone chosen as a leader, had faith before God had 
affirmed and told him for sure what was going to happen. Um, so then it carries on. Um, it carries on from from verse seven. It says the Lord. Um, it says the Lord told Joshua, "Today I will begin to make you a great leader in the eyes of all Israel. They will know that I am with you." just as I was with Moses. Give this command to the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant. When you reach the banks of the Jordan River, river, take a few steps into the river and stop there. So Joshua told the Israelites, come and listen to what the Lord your God says. Today you will know that the living God is among you. He will surely drive out the Canaanites, Hivites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Girgashites, Amorites, and the Jebusites ahead of you. Look, the Ark of the Covenant, which belongs to the Lord of the whole earth, will lead you across the Jordan River. Now, choose 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. The priests will carry the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth. So, as soon as their feet touch the water, the flow of water will be cut off upstream. The river will will stand up like a wall. So the people left their camp to cross the Jordan, and the priests who were carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. It was the harvest season, and the Jordan was flowing its banks, overflowing its banks. But as soon as the feet of the priests who were carrying the Ark touched the water at the river's edge, the water above the point began to backing up, and a great distance away at a town called Adam, which is near Zarathun. And the water below that point flowed onto the Dead Sea until the riverbed was dry. Then all the people crossed over near the town of Jericho. Meanwhile, the priests who were carrying the Ark of the Lord's Covenant stood on dry ground in the middle of the riverbed as the people passed by. They waited there until the whole nation of Israel had crossed the Jordan on dry ground. Awesome. We will finish that there. Um, So what also stood out to me here was how the... um, So then Joshua then explains to the people what is going to happen. And he says that God's spirit... The God of the earth is going to move ahead and he and this is what is going to happen and you're going to be able to cross the Jordan River. And you see the priests who are carrying the ark, they don't just steam on ahead and go by. They go into the Jordan River, they stand there in the middle because they believe them as the leaders that we can't move on ahead and we're helping to make this happen. So let's just move a bit forward and after we've moved a bit forward, let's let everyone go by and then once everyone is forward, we can then move forward. And I think again, this is a great side sign of a good leader is am I doing moves that can inspire someone's faith and potentially produce miracles And am I allowing my people to move forward with me and beyond? Is that when I'm, when me or a leader is um, doing well, is when a leader is cranking and moving forward in their life and doing incredible things, are they just steaming on ahead and just hoping their people are going to catch up? Or are they moving forward in the midst of miracles, inspiring their people so their people can move forward and then go past So then they can then take another step forward and do another great miracle. And that their people can also um, do the same. So I think um, my practical challenge for me in that is to believe that God will work in the situation where I am. And to talk about it, the way Joshua spoke about it, the way Joshua was just like, yes, this is going to happen. God is going to do this because God would not have brought us here just to leave us to die. No, I have faith that my God will do it and to talk about it in faith. Um, that the same way Joshua did before it was asserted to him, it will happen. So God had never told him. God hadn't told him yet 
that he would do the miracles that he'd done in his life. So I think um, this to me showed me the power of the soap method. When I first read this, I was like, I don't, there's no clear answer here. There's no clear, um, again, relatability to me and my situation here. I don't see it. I wasn't connecting with it. But I think, but the moment I started doing the soap method, I started to see it. And I think this is, this, this, this carries on from what we were reading, you know, um, a couple of days ago in Joshua chapter one, where it says from verse seven, it says, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave to you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the left or to the right or to the left. Then you'll be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Is that this is the, the study this book of instruction continually. And this is what we're doing. You know, this is the, the studying of this book. And when you study it, not just read it, but study is where there's a powerful difference, you know? And I'm, I'm, I'm not here to say that there might not be one day where we're gonna read it, maybe come to the book of Numbers and we're just reading all these names and it's not difficult. But the study method, studying your Bible is powerful. It is powerful. So I encourage you guys, go after it. This isn't your quiet time, right? I'm not God. I'm reading the words, but God is going to speak to you personally through his word. What I just got from this, you might connect with something differently. There might be something else that stands out to you. So let me know, was there anything else that stood out to you in what we read today? Was there any sort of nugget that I missed that you want to share? I'd love to hear. And uh, let me know what you read this morning for your quiet time. But uh, until then, until tomorrow, hopefully. <laughs> Uh, I will I will see you then take it easy guys bye bye